hey friends welcome or welcome back to my channel in today's video i have some dollar tree big lots dupes for you guys so if that's something you're interested in then just keep watching Okay friends, so to start off, this is the project that I had mentioned in my Dollar Tree haul that everybody said they wanted to see. So I take three 11 by 14 frames from Dollar Tree. They're the pretty big ones. I was actually shocked to see these at Dollar Tree. Um, but anyway, I take them out of the plastic and then I take the backing off as well as that sheet that was in the inside. Next, I take some wooden beads. I believe these are 12 millimeter. They're either 12 or 10 millimeter bead size. Don't quote me on it. But I do just glue a row around the inside edge of one of the frames with some hot glue. I know I get comments a lot that <laughs> People like can't stand my nails. I don't know, it's weird, but you guys have had these. They're my real nails. I've had them for eight years. The only difference is it just says acrylic over them to keep my nails strong. But anyway, even if I didn't have nails, um, a tip you can do is just take a pair of tweezers. Mine are like the Cricut tweezers. They're kind of like reversed and use those to um, handle your wood beads. So once I had that row done, then I glue two of the frames together and then I glue the last frame on top of the wooden bead row. Oh, and yes, my little kiddos are right here with me, so if you hear them, that's why. Um, but I do just take a tiny little broom to get rid of all the glue strings. And then I go in with my mineral chalk paint and I very carefully go over those beads. I probably should have painted these first, but um, if you guys are new here, my name's Melissa and I like to work backwards. <laughs> <laughs> but do as I say not as I do so I would paint your beads first if you want them colored um, but um, once I did that I fix it anyway you're not going to be able to tell that I did get some paint on the frame so really was no big deal in the end but it probably would have made my life a lot easier so next I go in with my mini chip brush and that same paint the mineral and I dry brush all the way around all three of the frames and then once I had the dry brushing with the mineral done then I just go in with my ink waverly chalk paint and I just kind of dry brush those edges that I got the mineral on that way it all kind of blended in seamlessly and it looked like that dry brushing was supposed to be there Next, I take all three of those backers and glue them together. One or even two of them by themselves were extremely flimsy, and I wanted this to be nice and sturdy. So um, if you don't really care about it being flimsy, then you can skip this step, but I wanted mine to last a long time and um, be nice and sturdy, like I said. So I did go ahead and glue them together, and then you guys, I don't know what's going on on with my camera but this entire video there's clips that were just totally lost so I did just include that I cut up one of those bags that came with my Cricut Easy Press and that's what I'm using on this backer sheet or for a backer sheet I I should say or like a background and I did just take some Mod Podge and I Mod Podge one of the layers on there I let that dry and then the other side of the bag I glued that down with Mod Podge as well now once that was completely dry I took my rotary knife and I just trimmed off that excess Thank you. 
I then took this self-adhesive wall tile that I actually got from the Dollar Tree D stash group on Facebook and I cut this down. Well, first I laid it on the back. I marked it where I wanted to cut it down and then I cut those sides off where I marked it. Once I cut those sides off, then there was, I didn't like purposely do a certain pattern i just kind of went with my scissors and did kind of like waves on all of the sides if that makes absolutely no sense because sometimes i like can't get my words out what i'm trying to say um you can see what i did here and then once i had it cut out then i gave it two good coats of white waverly chalk paint Next, I go in with my Waverly Antique Wax and surprise, surprise, my chip brush. And at first, I went very light because it's much easier to just add more than take some off. So I did this in layers and I just kind of layered that wax on these raised parts so that way you could really see the details. I loved the details so much that I wanted you to really be able to see them. So I probably did about five Five layers and with each layer I just got darker and darker and I love this so so much you guys um, but I did just want to add a little bit more detail so in the original piece the edges were very weathered so all I did was go in with my distress ink and a blending brush that I got from Dollar Tree it's the really really tiny one and I just went around all the edges again kind of in layers and I just wanted it to look like an antique piece I then glued five of the little wooden squares from Dollar Tree on the back and then I glued that down to the other backing piece and once again I did the exact same thing with the distress ink on the backer sheet or bag or whatever I don't know what to call this you guys um, and I just went around those edges as well to make it blend in and look all cohesive and then last but not least you guys I put the backing in there and look how beautiful this is it was so quick and easy and cheap to make this like I knew in the store that I was not going to pay that kind of money for it because I knew that I could quickly make it much cheaper so let me know in the comments down below which one do you like better would you pay $20 for the one at Big Lots or would you just make your own If you guys are new here, my name's Melissa. I'm so grateful that you're here and so happy to have you. I love to do all things crafty on a budget, especially Dollar Tree DIYs. Farmhouse decor is my specialty and much more. I've been doing more Dollar Tree hauls and thrift flips, so you definitely don't wanna miss out on a single second. Click that red subscribe button, that way you don't miss anything. So each week on my channel, I show you guys my earrings of the week and surprise surprise it's another walmart pair of earrings but you guys i could not pass these up when i saw them they are these little hoops with ribbon around them and a little bow i love bows so i just could not pass these up and of course they're black and white my favorite colors well black and gray i should say and i just love them so much they're nice and lightweight they probably wouldn't be really hard to make so i might try to make some um but anyway with all that being said let's jump back into today's diys Okay guys, so for this next project, I took this little sign from Dollar Tree. I take it out of the packaging as usual. I take the little hanger off and then I tried to remove this heart, but you guys, that heart was not going anywhere. So I just left it alone. I was gonna use the backside anyway, so um, it didn't really bother me. And then I went in with my lightweight spackling and I just filled those holes. Once that was dry, then I give this a distressed coat of white Waverly chalk paint.
Next, I go in with my pieces of poplar that I have. Um, I have a bunch of poplar in my stash. Every time we go to Home Depot, I kind of pick them up just so that way I have them. Plus, my husband has a ton of scrap wood. So, um, I just took a piece of this. I measured it for the top and the bottom, and then I took it to my saw, cut it down, and then once I cut it down, I brought it in. I sanded off the rough edges and then I don't know if you guys remember or saw my latest video my latest DIY video I created this stain with some truffle some ink and some water and I just mixed it and I loved this color so much that I had to use it again so I just use my faux stain to stain those two pieces as well as this little house that I had I actually bought this for my daughter and she had crayoned the little door so I did have to sand that down but you can't really tell so it didn't matter anyway but I left the windows and the door that natural wood color because I lost the footage but I did paint the windows and the door white and then I went in with my little zip sander and I sanded down all of these edges. Now you're gonna see throughout this entire video, um, I do this on pretty much all the wood pieces that I use. When I kind of do these videos, I kind of want everything to look cohesive. So um, that's the reasoning behind it. But once I had those pieces sanded down, then I do go in with my chalk couture transfer and this one says home is my happy place and I transfer that on with my black chalk paste. Next I take these Jenga blocks to the back of these pieces of poplar and I kind of wanted to do this so that way my sign had something to glue to and stand up nicely so I do just take a straight edge and glue a few Jenga pieces down that straight edge. Okay guys, so here's another part that you do as I say, not as I do. So at first I laid this wood piece out with the Jenga blocks further away from the sign and I drilled two or I pre-drilled two holes in it so that we could put these eyelet hooks in there but I should have had this reversed so in the end I did fix it and of course I lost the footage but once I fixed it I did paint the little eyelet screws with my truffle waverly chalk paint see because when i went to put this together um they were not in the right spot so i wanted to have one towards the um, left side so that it could hold the jute actually you'll see in a minute so before i explain that um i went in with my antique wax and I distressed the edges and I also put a eyelet screw at the top of this house. Okay, so this was when I had fixed it, but I had screwed the uh, first eyelet hole in the original hole. You guys, I was all discombobulated this day. So once I went to um, put the beads on, then I do fix it, but I glued the sign down and then I just reinforce it with some hot glue in the back. Now, as you guys know, Dollar Tree signs are bowed and not even, and um, the one side didn't want to stay, so I really had to glue it good and then hold it down until it was completely dry, and then I glued the bottom piece on. So here is where you can see that I needed an eyelet screw in the left-hand corner, as well as one um, about three quarters of the way down, not all the way to the right, because that's where our house is gonna hang. So 
if you guys do this project just make sure that is where you drill your holes but I just take a long piece of jute and I glue the end so that it's kind of like a needle I saw my friend Nicole from the week's nest do that because I've always put tape on it um, and I tied it to the first eyelet I then put eight of the my 14 millimeter beads I put one of my 20 millimeter bead and then eight more tied it to the other eyelet and then put another 20 millimeter bead and then I um, tied the house onto the end of where that bigger bead is Next, I take my jute and this light color jute, and I'm just going to make a quick tassel. Now, I didn't want this tassel to be too fluffy, so I didn't do too many strands. I only wrapped it around my hand about eight times, and then I tied a piece of the lighter jute to the top, and then I take another of the darker jute, and I tie it at the a little bit down from the top if that makes sense to kind of create like a loop and then I cut the ends and made sure they were even and I attached that to the end of my beads now I was going to stop here but I felt that it was missing a little something so I just grabbed some greenery from my stash and I glued two pieces to the middle as well as I made a simple bow with this natural colored ribbon with black trim and then I glued that to the middle of the greenery and then literally you guys although I had a few hiccups along the way I don't think any project is without um you know without something that goes wrong um, but you just want to keep going if you mess up you can redo it it's not a big deal you guys um, we all are crafters and we all mess up it just is what it is so don't be don't be discouraged you guys can do it I know you can so let me know in the comments down below what you think of this project I want to thank Kate times two, Tina times three, and Melanie for the craft supplies. If you guys enjoy my work and would like to support my channel and get a shout out in my next video, go to the link in the description box below. I greatly appreciate it so much, but you guys don't have to support me monetarily. There are so many different ways you can support your favorite creators. You can hit that like button, subscribe, um, share it with your family and friends because all those things help our channels to grow and help YouTube to notice us and you can also watch the ads click the ads that is how we get paid from YouTube so I did just want to mention that and whatever way you support me I appreciate every single one of you so so much Okay guys, moving on, if you guys ever see signs in stores, please don't buy them. You can make them so cheap and so easy. So I just take one of these signs from Dollar Tree, I take the tag and the sticker off, and then I fill the holes with lightweight spackling as well as sanding down that sticker residue. I then go in with this really deep navy blue that I made. I just took a little bit of ink Waverly chalk paint as well as it like a blue color paint and then I mixed it together and gave this a pretty good coat leaving a tiny bit of that wood sh or wood color I should say shining through. I then took my square dowel rods which are always linked in my Amazon store in my link tree in the description box below and I uh, measure out a frame cut those down and then stain those pieces with that same faux stain that I made.
Once I had those stained, then I take my Be Our Guest transfer with um, ch my Chalkator Be Our Guest transfer, and all of the Chalkator um, products that I use in this video will also be at the top of my link tree and um, in the description box below. You'll see it. It'll say all of my links are in one place, and um, that's where you can find every single link that I um mention will be all in that place all in one place good lord you guys it, it wouldn't be melissa if she could actually talk right <laughs> i just thought that it would be much easier to put all the links in one place so that's the reasoning behind that but i do pick out the make yourself at home and i did want to stack this so all you have to do is fuzz your transfer really really good which means just put a little bit of um, lint on the back of it so that way when you put it down on your surface it lifts up nice and easily um, but you don't have to uh, transfer it on exactly how you can see it you can mix and match you can put half a one and then the other half underneath which is what I did um, but then I do go in with I believe these are willows I don't really know don't quote me um, and they are there's two pieces to them so they're layered so I put the first piece down with white and then the second part to fill in those willows I did with my dune color so while that's drying I take my frame pieces and I just sand those down like I did the rest of the wood pieces in this video and last but not least I start by gluing the bottom down I then glue the sides down the so that way I can make sure that it um, fits together really nicely and then I glue the top down and that was it you guys this sign probably took me about 20 minutes to make maybe 30 and I literally saved $10 and I just love this one so much I actually like it better than the one I saw in the store so let me know in the comments down below what you think and as usual which project is your favorite Okay friends, as promised, we're gonna do another giveaway. So because I'm using these self-adhesive wall tiles, I know that not a lot of you can get them. So I'm gonna do a giveaway, two each to two winners. It'll end July 30th at 1159 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And all you have to do is like this video, comment your dream vacay in the uh, comment section share it with someone who you think would enjoy this and for an extra entry go into that link tree in the description box and join my vip group on facebook Okay, friends, so I probably saved the best for last, but per usual, I can never pick which one I love. Neither can a lot of you, and I appreciate that so much. But here is the project where the most footage was just gone. I could not believe it. But I took a piece of foam board from Dollar Tree and nine of those mirrors that are in the candle section normally, and I glue them down three across, three in the middle, three at the bottom. Now, this is where I was like, holy crap, where is all my footage? So I took two of the pieces they were actually the scrap pieces from the project i did with the little house and i um, cut down two longer pieces for the sides i will try to leave the um, measurements in the description box and then two pieces for the top and right underneath the bottom row of the mirrors i then took that same stain i stained my pieces and sanded them down once again surprise surprise next i take my hot glue and i glue directly on those pieces of wood and i glue at the bottom edge and then like kind of up the side and I glue that right to that foam board. Next I take my square dowels 
and I'm pretty sure these are my half inch so I laid two of them down and then I cut those and then I measured the cross pieces cut those down as well and then I had this scrap piece I went in my husband's scrap piece of wood pile he has a ton of it you guys because that's what he does for a living he does woodworking and handyman all kinds of stuff so anyway I just um, measured for the shelf piece cut that down and then I took my stir sticks and that was another part of footage that was missing I measured the back pieces um, with large stir sticks cut those down so that they would fit the back really nicely and then stained the shelf and the cross pieces in the mirror with that stain and then for the back pieces I wanted this to look a little different so I kind of stained each one a little bit differently going a little bit heavy handed on some going like kind of lightly and then really lightly and then once that dried then of course I went in with my sander and I sanded down all of those edges Okay, so like I said, I wanted these to look different. So once the um, stir sticks were nice and dry, then I go in with my white Waverly chalk paint. And once again, I kind of dry brush that white paint on there. Again, no rhyme or reason, just randomly um, putting a lot on some of them, a little on others. Um, as I always say, if that makes absolutely no sense, you can see what I'm doing here. I then just assemble all of the pieces for the mirror and here I'm showing you that I did mark them or label them I should say. I like to do that so I know where everything goes and I don't have to fight to put it back together. So I like to lay them out where they go and then I go in with my hot glue and glue them down. Now because this is a mirror and hot glue dries really quickly, you want to put the hot glue on your wood pieces and then glue them down rather than glue on the mirror and then put your wood pieces down because if you do that, chances are they're not going to stick. Next, I go in with the um, shelf and I glue that down as well and I flip it over and I glue the back pieces down. Now, another part of footage that was just vanished, um, once I had glued the wooden pieces to the sides and the top and bottom, I flipped it over and I took some um, hot glue and I just kind of squiggled it on the edges around that foam board just so that way I made sure that um, the middle part was not going to go anywhere. Next, I go in with these black hooks that I got from Walmart. I lay them out where I like them. At first, I wanted them a little higher, and then I decided to go a little bit lower. Um, you can always screw these onto your stir stick before you glue them down if you would like, but again, Melissa likes to work backwards, so it is what it is. No big deal, but um, I do just take my drill and I drill down all of those hooks right where I like them. I did measure them to make sure that they were nice and evenly spaced and then I covered those um, screw holes or screws because I used different screws so that they were shorter with my ink Waverly chalk paint and you guys I'm not even gonna lie this project took no time at all. I literally did it in two hours I love the way that this turned out and I saved a ton of money. So per usual, if you guys are still here, you guys are the real OGs. Leave a heart in the uh, comment section below. Let me know which project is your favorite. Don't forget about the giveaway. Thank you so much to my craft supply supporters. 
and each and every one of you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a part of this journey. I am so excited to see where this channel goes and it is all because of you guys. So I know that that was long-winded. Y'all know your girl loves to talk. So don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already because you don't want to miss any giveaways, any fun things, plus the amazing projects that I bring and share it with your family and friends if you think that they would enjoy it as well. And don't forget to enter into the giveaway. And if nobody has told you today, you are absolutely stunning and gorgeous. You are worthy and I love you with all my heart and soul. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Bye.